Why I think you should fight more. Well, when I was a little kid, I used to cry about everything. I used to cry if the milk spilled. I used to cry if I forgot my pants for martial arts class. I used to cry about almost anything. And my dad started having me spar, which added a lot more stress, which meant a lot more crying. And what I was most thankful for was that my dad didn't let me quit. Even though I would cry on the way to training, I would cry while I was at training. I would cry while I got beat up. I cried on the way home for who knows how long. I was like four or five, maybe six. And every time my dad would say, like, what are you afraid of? And because I'm scared, it's scary to do, blah, blah, blah. And the nice thing about my dad, though, was he was also learning how to spar at the same time. So he was easily able to relate to me. So when he would say, Chris, I'm scared to go on the ring. Also, I just fight through it. That's how you build courage. Everyone gets nervous before you do it. All that stuff is expected. But then you get to build all these good character traits from that. So I stuck with it. I stuck with it. I stuck with it. Eventually, I developed some competence, started getting better. And then uh, the rest is history. So the important thing, though, and what that did for me after being on national team for seven, eight years was it increased my stress threshold. And as you guys have probably seen on a lot of different podcasts, the amount of stress you can handle is correlated to the amount of success you can have. So many of you can handle a lot of stress, but if you don't fight, there's a whole nother level of stress that you can actually activate, which will allow you to gain more success. And the reason I say that is because I don't really know of too many other things that you can do voluntarily, voluntarily to increase your stress level. Because even though there are things to do at work, even though there's certain responsibilities you may have, there's nothing quite as stressful as someone trying to punch you in the face. There's, someone, there's nothing quite as stressful as someone trying to break your arm in jiu-jitsu. Now, if you are already doing this, good. You know, continue on your way. But if you're not doing this yet, I'm going to give you guys a couple tips on how to get started. So, number one, in boxing, people do try and punch you in the face. But if you're just starting out, most boxing gyms don't have you spar right away. Most boxing gyms will have you do a few trainings. And then there's a gym I know out here in Sacramento where if you are new, you have to show competency in all of the basics before they ever put you in your first sparring match. So you're going to go in there. You're going to have a little bit of offensive weapons, a little bit of defensive weapons. That's what a good gym will do. So I suggest asking, oh, when does a sparring start or how would I, how would I get started in that? Just to not so you're thrown in right away, but so that way you can get a gauge for how the gym is. If they have you spar right away and you don't know anything, I might pass on the gym because to be honest, for, for boxing or for combat sport, you need to have some fundamentals for how to defend yourself. Jiu-jitsu is nice because according to Rogan, you can go all out in jiu-jitsu, but because you're rolling and uh, there's no striking involved, you can go all out and just tap before something breaks and you're going to be fine. You might be a little bit sore, especially for muscle, uh, muscle kind of stuff. But for the most part, you're going to be taken care of. And so a lot of people get scared because the first time they go in there, they see these guys at the UFC, they see people getting bloody. But that's not how most places operate. Most places will train you with the basics, match you against someone around your skill level, and then that way you can slowly develop the competency. But even just going to those and then getting to your first couple sparring matches in training, that's going to already boost that stress threshold that you're trying to increase so you can correlate that to your success in finances. What this also helps with is because you're able to increase the amount of stress you have and you do that willingly, the amount of stuff that goes on at home. So for example, kids are crying, car breaks down, all this stuff happens, all this stress is happening around you. You're better equipped to handle it because you're used to higher levels of stress. So a lot of this stuff is stressful. But it's not, this is the end of the world. This is a, oh, okay, this is how we solve that. So my bid to you guys, my ask to you guys is if you haven't started fighting, you haven't found a combat sport, whether it's jiu-jitsu, boxing, taekwondo, Muay Thai, whatever it is, something where you guys actually have to spar, I would suggest going to go find one of those places because I think that the benefits, number one, you're going to get physically more fit. But number two, the increased amount of stress that you guys have is definitely going to pay off in other areas of your life. And I wish that for you. So that's today's video. I'll see you guys tomorrow.